Hello everyone, today we are going to use Unity uh, to move these things um, and we're going to use them with the keyboard so uh, there's some mouse stuff you can do there um, there obviously are some components we can use but in this case we're just going to move something very simply and then have it interact with something else so and if, if I go to my game view right away what you'll notice is that I have a cylinder and a sphere and I'm going to go back to this um, I'm created a material it's real boring so I call it boring um, but basically I just wanted to be able to see them reasonably well uh, off the white terrain that I'm using since I haven't actually shown how to use materials that will we'll hold off on that into another section but today what we're going to be focusing on is being able to move this cylinder and I have already created a C sharp uh, script and it's already in the assets here but the, the beautiful thing about it um, in fact I'm going to remove this component is that you can always add these on later so in your project so I call this project uh, moving and seeing and let me bring it up real quick bringing it in here we can see that um, this is my everything that's in my unity folders and you'll notice that there is an asset folder here if I double click on that else's folder, you're going to see more stuff, but you're going to see the move it CS file, which is the C sharp file that runs this. If I double click on this, I can bring it up. And the beautiful thing about this, though, is that it's not only here, but I can actually drag and drop other files into the space or just drag and drop them right into here. Um, and they will be available to Unity, or at least this Unity project. So let's double click on that. And once I do that, I'm going to bring it over. And this is the actual file opened up in Visual Studio. Now, if I want to put it onto the cylinder, I just have to make the cylinder active, drag it, drop it in here and it's the same as doing an add component system it's just that simple we're putting it in now if we look at the scripting here it's pretty simple um we are only going to use the global coordinates which means left always means left and right always means right the cylinder doesn't control what's left and right's right so if we turn the cylinder around um you know it doesn't switch the left doesn't switch to right and vice versa uh, we can actually we can run a, a just run it very quickly if I push the a key it's going to move left oops if I move, move push the D key it's going to move right W forward and s backwards very very simple system no big issues there but the key is that what I wanted to show you is not the fancy movement is how we actually get to that state and really all we have to do is look at one of these if statements I'm going to put if input get key is W now this is going to be a very simple way to do it in this case we do not need to know um, how the keyboard interprets the W down there by putting the double quotes around that W we just say okay look at that W key um, it's not it's always going to look for that W notice that we also put this in the update that means that was always going to listen for that W key as well um, you can put the get key down which in like a lot of other um, I want to say game engines, but in, in other uh, keyboard interpreting code, a lot of times that works better. However, if you use key down in this situation it, um, and you keep the W depressed, it won't keep moving your object. It's, it'll move it once and that'll be it, and then you'll have to, it'll kind of have to go up and down, up and down, up and down to get it to move straight or forward in this case. Now let's take a look um, at the other pieces. Transform, uh, that just means it's going to move it in some way. It's either going to move it back, forward, right, left, which is translate, or it's going to turn, turn it right, up, down, 
to the left, to the right. That would be rotation. And I am going to put 1 times delta time in here. So 1 is a very small increment and would keep it from moving not too fast. The reason for the time delta time is to make sure that um, if lag occurs, it still goes with that rate. So in other words, if I'm shooting off at 30 frames per second and I drop down to like 2, um, the motion, the movement will be the same across the screen. It won't, it won't move slower because my frame rate's moving slower. And therefore, we'll keep a, um, a, a believability to it. And that's basically it. Um, because after this, you can just copy and paste to do the same thing for the S, the D, and the A. The only thing that you have to switch around is the um, where you're putting that 1 times delta time in here. So notice this is going to be 0, 0, delta, and then the 1 delta time. That means 0 on the X, 0 on the Y, and then somewhere in the Z. So if it and since it's positive, that means it's going forward, or at least that's what it, that's the way we've made it work. But if you look at the S key, which is traditionally backwards, it's got to be in reverse of that. So really, what we're doing here is doing zero, zero, negative one. So all we've done is switch the sign to make it go in the reverse direction. And likewise with the A and the D key. Um, remembering that in Unity Y is up, so if I were to put this where this second zero is, it's going to move it either up or down. We don't want that. We want it left or right, which means we got to keep it in the X position um, of this coordinates. And negative one made it go to my left using the camera, and one made it go to the negative or to the right for my camera. And now you have this kind of smooth motion uh, that constantly gets updated thanks to Unity's update method. Okay, now let's take a look at it again and see what else could go wrong. Uh, <laughs> uh, and in this case, we are going to use the WASD keys. And you can, uh, if you know your C sharp, you can use an OR statement and use the arrow keys. But in the, when you start using the arrow keys, what you're going to need to do is use the oops, key codes um, in order to make it work, because those don't have an express letter uh, associated with them. So maybe we'll do that right at the end. So here we go and I am going to um, move this and it looks like it's going pretty well it's you know moving and it's moving pretty smoothly but here's the issue when I start going this I go right through that ball um, do we want this usually not usually not unless that's like a bush in a game or something like that or water you don't want it to just go through through it so what we have to do here is we're going to do add components. So we're going to add components to both of these. Uh, go into physics and then rigid body. And rigid body means it will not bend, but in this case it also means that it will react with other objects. It gives it a nice little mass, a drag, etc. The big thing here that you're worried about is for right now, make sure gravity's on and kinematics is off. Uh, look, it may, and all, when you do this, make sure that you have your objects above the train. You don't want them even in the middle of the train because it could actually just pass through. Um, so it, uh, if you've ever seen some of my stuff, a lot, sometimes you'll always see a little bit of a drop in the beginning, almost like someone just hit the table before we started. Um, because, just for that reason, is just because I don't want to make sure something's stuck inside something else or that it's just going to pass right through and down to the center of the earth afterwards. Uh, when you would have that, go ahead and do the same thing here. Um, again, physics rigid body and there we go so now when we play it I'm gonna move my cylinder over and then let's see if I can hit it right boom and oh 
And as you can see, I can still move my cylinder, but it's left and right are a little bit messed up now. But at least now we have the interaction. Now let me go back for just a second to talk about that OR statement. So right here, we can say what this is basically saying is if it's got this key pushed down in the W, um, do it. Or just say if, that, if that's true, then do the second part. So we are going to do an OR statement here and do the, essentially the same exact piece. In fact, I am going to do that. I'm just going to copy this. Actually, I don't want to copy the parenthesis. Now, this is redundant. So what we want to do is change this from a W to key code. And let me make sure, hopefully it has the autocorrect on here if I do this wrong, because I never know which capitalized and what's not, depending on what piece of software I'm using. But I think this will work, and we're going to use the... or maybe actually up arrow, I believe it is. So now I am going to hit save, go back into Unity. It's compiling the new one. Let's give it a quick try. Now I can move it forward, still using the W, but I can also go to the keypad, or actually not the numpad, but the arrow keys, and still do that. And so you can use that same exact methodology to expand out these as well. So it would be, you know, um, down arrow, right arrow, and left arrow for the other pieces. Give that a try. Go ahead and complete that and see how it works.